The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, my name is Carlos Tapia. I'm a product marketing manager at eFolder and your host for today's event. Welcome to our eFolder Partner Chat series. This webinar series brings together leading eFolder partners for business-oriented discussions. Today's topic is Marketing for the Masses, How One Partner Cost-Effectively Markets to Clients. Today, we are joined by Phil Bauman, President of BoomTech. So before we go through today's agenda, let's cover a few housekeeping items. Uh, today's session is being recorded. The recorded version of the webinar will be made available on eFolder's YouTube channel. We'll also make copies of the slides available to those who registered for the event. With over 150 people registered for today's session, we have put all participants in listen-only mode. You can enjoy the audio portion of today's event by either streaming it on your computer or by dialing in. Questions are strongly encouraged throughout. We have planned a special Q&A section at the end of today's discussion, but you may submit your questions as we go along and we will try to address them on the fly. Uh, today's presentation follows a logical flow. After introducing our partner guests, uh, Phil Bauman, and learning more about Boom Tech IT, we will discuss the challenges of partner space when it comes to marketing their solutions. We will then explain why it is incredibly important for MSPs to mark their solutions effectively and learn how Phil has done just this without breaking the bank. We'll then answer any questions you may have. May have. Questions are strongly encouraged throughout. While we have a dedicated portion at the end of this webinar for Q&A, uh, again, please submit as we go along. <clears throat> All right, so uh, let me introduce Phil. Uh, Phil originally founded Boom Tech after moving to the United States from Switzerland at the age of 24. His clients say he operates his business like a Swiss clock because he is a very detail-oriented person uh, and, and a very detail-oriented process that allows him to come up with a technology solution to his client's problem no matter what it takes. Says Phil, I feel like we are part of our clients' companies, and that's a great feeling, knowing that we are here for them and they trust us with all their IT needs. BoomTech has been in business for 10 years now, and BoomTech's professional, flexible, creative, and service-oriented demeanor allows the company to address clients' technology issues and prevent new issues from rising. Phil, thanks so much for joining us, and welcome. Absolutely. Thanks. All right, so Phil, uh, before we, we jump into the presentation, why don't you tell us a little bit more about BoomTech and, and what it is that you guys do? Sure. So uh, as you mentioned, uh, we started in 2005 uh, before it was called Mare Services, but we've always kind of did, you know, residual agreements with our clients. And uh, so in doing that, uh, we have about 33 uh, Mare Service clients. Uh, we only do uh, Mayor services. It doesn't have to be a full, but they gotta have some reoccurring piece attached to it. Uh, we're out of Boca Raton, Florida, uh, so we're servicing the three counties, Miami, Palm Beach, and Broward. Um, we do about 50-60% of our clients are attorneys. Uh, other than that, we have all kinds from, uh, you know, real estate to Florida Turnpike services to uh, somebody, you know, supplies uh, public with party goods, so broad spectrum. And we also recently just started another entity which is really strictly focused on title companies and uh, real estate law firms. Uh, so it's under the BroomTech umbrella, but it's just a different website, which is titleagencyit.com. Carlo? Sorry about that. I, I <laughs> muted myself. And, um, <laughs> so, uh, so I was just saying, uh, you know, thanks for, thanks for introducing your company, Phil, and we'll get back to um, uh, what it is that you guys do and how you guys go to market and do marketing. Um, uh -huh. And I was just going on about... <laughs> general challenges that, that partners face, especially in the marketing arena. Um, 
So, uh, we, you know, one of the one of the big challenges today is that uh, the margins on a lot of big box big box services has gone down, um, and this is this is really the uh, the result of a lot of uh, services becoming more available, especially in the SME market. A prime example of this would be a, a service like Office 365, where uh, for the M for an SMB that might be five dollars, five to ten dollars per user, and so the margin. But the biggest thing and the biggest change for us was, you know, three years ago I said, okay, I'm not going to fix anything anymore. I'm just not going to do it no matter what's on fire. Uh, I'm, and we're not huge. You know, we're only seven people, uh, so four dedicated technical folks. And uh, so taking me out of that role and not letting myself being dragged back into that role really made a world of a difference. Uh, and then I said, you know, I'm going to focus on the sales and marketing and operation side of things. And that really kind of changed it for us because otherwise you just don't have enough time. You don't. You're always going to get sucked back into that down server, into that who knows what. Yeah, yeah, there's, I, I think, I think your, your, <laughs> your message and at least your experience will, will resonate with a lot of people on the call who do find themselves in the trenches and do find themselves, uh, you know, work uh, working on that down server and and aren't finding the time to do these types of uh, these types of activities. So um, so so then the question it really becomes uh, why invest time in marketing? Um, you know, if 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 I I think today after hearing uh, from Phil's experience, we'll have answered this question, but. Just to just to foreshadow some of the things that we're going to talk about, it's um, you know marketing is is really all about scaling your business and growing your business um, and making sure that you're reaching your clients and your prospective clients as well. And a lot of partners today, uh, you you know you ask them what's your number, how, how do you do marketing or how do you do sales? And a lot of partners will come back and they'll say, oh, you know we depend on referrals. And the reality is that there are only so many referrals you can get. 
and eventually you will plateau. And so, so this first bullet is that it's not a scalable strategy um, to depend on referrals. More, more than that, um, marketing is really something that sets you apart. The, the process of branding your company and, and demonstrating value and communicating value for your services sets you apart from uh, the competition from other MSPs, the MSP market is, is heating up today. And being able to differentiate your services and provide things that uh, are tailored and appear to be tailored is uh, incredibly important. Um, and then uh, with that, if you are able to differentiate your services, you're able to charge higher margins because if there's perceived value and you are delivering that value, you're able to charge your clients more and you're able to make your services more sticky and make them seem more legitimate and attract new clients. Um, so those are, those are really some of the reasons why partners need to do marketing. Um, I, I'll add that clients want, uh, clients want to be served by an MSP that not only is professional, but also appears to be professional. If your IT is any uh, reflection of your business itself, uh, chances are you're going to choose the MSP that it, uh, if you're if you're debating between two MSPs, you're going to choose the one that you believe to have more value. And marketing can go a long way in, in the way that you present yourself and the image that your your company has. Um, and then on top of that is that when you do marketing and when you are able to brand your services and you're able to deliver these services in a in a unique way. Uh, clients ultimately feel that they're receiving a service that's tailored for them, that's designed exclusively for them, and that has uh, has time and, and resources invested into it. It's not something that you're simply reselling. It's not something that was just pulled together. It's not an out-of-the-box solution. It's something that was delivered by you, by your company, that you guarantee and that you stand behind. Um, so what would you what would you add to uh, to answer this question? Why invest time in marketing? Right, you really hit it right. You know, the main reason we did it was the same thing. You know, over the first seven years, we grew nicely just by itself. We didn't have to do anything. I was like, marketing, you crazy? Why would I? I don't have to. You know, new clients come along, referrals come in, and then at some point in your business, you kind of plateau where it just doesn't happen by itself and then I'm like oh wow what happened and uh, so that's when we started okay we need to build that marketing and sales engine and we need to build something that gives us a reproducible result so when we know we do X we get Y out of it uh, and as a you gotta do it just because you're gonna have churn you're gonna have clients that get bought out they get merged they close their business they go retire uh, so you're gonna have to do for that and also you want to also grow your company uh, and the only way to do that you know beyond referrals is to put that marketing in place it will eventually set you free I mean that's what we as business owner all want it you know want to have want to be we want to be free we don't want to be stuck here 24 hours you know working 10 hours a day and uh, and marketing can be that engine to set you free yeah that's great that's great. Um, so, so what are uh, uh, you know what what are some of the things that uh, marketing can unlock besides uh, giving you more time, allowing you to focus on those higher level tasks, setting you free, as as you said, Phil. Um, you know, on a very on a very practical level, uh, marketing the way it serves your different clients is that if for existing clients, they can expose these upsell and these cross opportunities and expand your relationships. So if you do have new services to provide, uh, marketing can, can uh, help you introduce those services to those existing clients. For new clients, uh, it really comes down to exposing those uh, existing pains or those risks that they have. You know, being able to communicate how a a service, a man service that you're providing solves a, a specific problem that they have, and being able to articulate that and market that uh, solution uh, can really get you in the door with new clients. And then there's this uh, idea of wedge clients, or um, where it, it could be it can be your foot in the door, um, where you may have a client who's um, on the fence, or may be working with another man services, or be doing their their technology themselves. And, uh, and if you're able to introduce one new service, that may present uh, a whole host of other opportunities that 
you may be able, you may find yourself eventually uh, doing the entire managed services contract for that client. Um, so this is, these are some of the growth drivers uh, uh, that marketing, um, marketing establishes. All right, so, um, so w one thing that we want to uh, uh, briefly mention here before we get into uh, Phil's uh, marketing, um, <laughs> how Phil does, uh, Phil and his company does marketing, um, is uh, Phil is actually an, an anchor partner, and uh, Phil, uh, uh, just, uh, just remind me, how long have you been a, a partner with Anchor now? With Anchor now, about eight, nine months. Oh, great, great. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, we're going to be talking about Anchor a little bit more and your experience with Anchor and how you've been able to brand and market the solution. But for those of you on the, on the call who aren't familiar with Anchor, Anchor is a business-grade filing service that's uh, delivered by eFolder. And it's designed exclusively for IT service providers. And what it allows is for you to deliver a solution that um, feels as simple as uh, a Dropbox, for example, but is as robust as any other business-grade filing solution on the market. So that might be a box. Uh, box is probably the closest on a feature-by-feature -feature basis because Anchor is, is really designed for uh, a business environment. Um, and what Anchor allows you to do is uh, go to your clients and say, I, I'm delivering this filing service to you which will give your end users access to their files and folders across any device. They can share these files and folders with anyone. They can share this content. And at the same time, uh, Anchor is so robust that you never compromise security and control. It's built on a multi-tenant dashboard, so you're able to manage all of your different clients. You're able to set uh, security policies and, uh, and really administer the solution um, in, in, a, in a very seamless way. Um, so that's what Anchor is. Just looking at the solution, as I mentioned, it's a business-grade filing service. And so uh, this is where most clients will interface with Anchor. Um, it, that they will, it's a syncs folder that resides in their Windows Explorer. And in this folder, they're going to have all of their files that are synced. Um, and they'll also have access to team share. So if they're collaborating with other users on a folder, they'll be able to see those files in real time and, and capture any updates. Um, and be able to share very easily. Um, on top of that, uh, because it is a file sync service uh, and because uh, really the premise of this is giving users access to their files and folders from any device, uh, there are mobile applications available. Um, so uh, today we support iOS. From anywhere or while they're on the go. Um, and then there's also the web interface uh, where uh, even if your client doesn't have an, a local agent installed or they're not on their mobile application, they can log into Anchor from any device uh, via the web. Um, and all of this, I should mention, is fully brandable, which is a, a big um, value add for a lot of service providers. And, and as we're talking about marketing and the importance of branding, uh, we'll come back to why having brandable services is so important. <clears throat> All right, so uh, so Phil, I'm gonna I'm gonna really let you uh, take the reins here and um, talk about uh, the way that you're doing marketing. And right before we go into that, um, let me just check the the question queue really quick. Um, so Anwar is asking, is there a slide deck with the pres uh, with the presentation? Um, And uh, <laughs> that question may, uh, Anwar, you should be seeing my screen. Um, and so there should have been, uh, hopefully, everybody was seeing my screen uh, at the start of this presentation. But um, just in case, I've shown my screen again. Um, so let me, uh, so uh, Phil, let me pass it over to you. Sure. All righty. So, uh as in what we were looking last year really uh, and that's how we found anchor is uh we wanted to have that that dropbox like 
experience for the end users. Uh, we looked at Dropbox for business, but it wasn't secure enough. So we had compliance issues and needs that, that weren't being met. Uh, in addition, you really could not brand it uh, whatsoever. Uh, so we looked around in the marketplace, and we looked at Sooner, we looked at Anchor, we looked at SiriSync, which is from Intermedia. Uh, and nobody was as brandable as the Anchor platform, uh, and nobody was as robust as it. And another big selling point for us was that you have that file server enablement, uh, which was huge for us. Uh, so this way you can really, I call it, you know, you can cloud enable your file server, which is great. So if the CEO sits at home and works on his laptop and he sticks a file in, in BoomSync, which we call our Anchor product, uh, and then he goes Monday morning back to the office and he logs into the computer and he goes to his network P drive, his stuff is there because his file server is cloud enabled. Uh, and Anchor was really the only one who had that, that feature out there. And uh, if you can move to the next slide. Um, so the activities that we've done is, and, and you'll see that later on, uh, eFolder gives you this nice playbook. So it kind of gave give you the, the the most of the work is done, uh, and a lot of the uh, collateral is already written, uh, the content. So all you have to do is just kind of take it, and make it yourself, uh, brand it, and then run with it. Uh, so on the branding piece, you know, we we did this lovely landing page on uh, on our website. If you go to boomtechit.com and then under solutions, you go to cloud sync. And uh, you, you'll see the uh, you know the ebook and the risk of, of having Dropbox and then also our brochure. Um, when we started the, the new solution, we then started an email campaign to our clients uh, that said, "Hey, we now offer this product, you know, with links to it. Uh, we offered 30-day free trials." to all our clients so we can try it out, you know, have them use it, have them experience it, get familiar with it. Uh, and on the email campaign, we do at least always three emails. You know, so we send one out saying, "Hey, this is the new thing." Then we send another one out say, "Hey, we haven't heard from you." You know, and then we send a third one out. And believe it or not, each time you send it, you get more responses back. So if you just send it out once, that's really not good enough <laughs> because people are busy. You know, they might like it or need it, but they just at this point it wasn't good timing for them. And uh, we did the nice brochure. So when we do our uh, technology business reviews, the quarterly business reviews, we uh, we put that brochure in each of our uh, f folders we hand out. Uh, so we just in person when we meet with the technical point of contact or decision maker, you know, we open up the brochure and say, hey, by the way, you know, here's BoomSync. It can do this, this, and the other for you. Uh, so that's kind of the approach uh, we have we have taken in taking the uh, BoomSync anchor to market. Uh, if you can go to the next slide. All right, so here you see uh, the actual web portal login. You see how it's fully branded. You know, it has BoomSync on it. Uh, then on the top, you actually see Outlook. It's not a very cool feature. You have an Outlook plugin, so you see it all the way on the right-hand side, where you now attach all your stuff right through the BoomSync plugin. <clears throat> Has many advantages. You know when somebody actually opened it, you can password restrict it. You can tell it only download once. Uh, so very nice, and everything fully brandable. And here you see our uh, web interface. Yeah. yeah. So just so it's clear, this is uh, this is this is Anchor as we were showing you before, um, and uh, and so every aspect of Anchor is brandable, or at least every part that your client touches. So um, really, eFolder and our branding falls by the wayside. And so when you're delivering this file sync service to your clients, you're able to brand it however you want. In this case, um, uh, Phil and, and his company BoomTech have branded their services BoomSync, and so on every aspect. On every touch point, the client is is seeing BoomSync, the screen service. Correct. Yeah, as a one client actually asked me, you know, she, I have three little kids, so I have three kids under five, and she asked me like, "Why the hell did you have time to program this?" And I'm like, "No, no, it's 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 we actually didn't make this ourselves. We did tell her it's you know it's something we resell, but it it looked so authentic, uh, you really did not see eFold or Anchor anywhere." 
And Phil, do you have any do you have any clients who? Because uh, one of the features of Anchor is that you can brand it with your company's logo, but you can also brand it for your clients. Do you have any clients who have asked or requested that the I've, service? I've be had one client who has said, "Oh well, if you could brand it for yourself, can you brand it for us?" And I said, "Sure, we could." Uh, he ended up not doing it, but that question came up once. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just curious. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a sure. look at some of the the collateral that that you developed. Um, right. So yeah. So what we did, as I say, you know, eFolder has this great uh, this great playbook with with most of the content. Uh, and what we just did is we we went ahead and, and made it our own. Uh, and as I say, if you go to boomtagit.com and then you go in solutions and you go down on the sink, you, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And uh, so we made the click to view the BoomSync ebook. Uh, so that goes over the risks of Dropbox. And it like displays the book nicely online, and you can scroll through it and, and read through it. Uh, then we have the brochure, uh, which is the top left that we, as I say, we take to us on every uh, every technology business review that we hand out. And then we have the white paper on the website that goes over the eight ways to boost employee productivity, morale with business grade file sync because now they can work from anywhere, so they're happier. You don't have to worry about you know VPNs anymore, and you know you can send large files, and you can collaborate and make sure your data is in sync and secure. Uh, so those are really the three marketing pieces we, we've built around the Anchor product. Yeah, so this is this is uh, the the takeaway here for everybody on the on the call is that um, eFolder, a big part of what we do is that our success is tied to uh, our partner's success. Is that by being a 100% channel focused company, um, we have every incentive and every interest to enable you to be successful. The more you sell, the <laughs> the, the better we both are. And um, and so what we've designed are these, uh, we call them partner playbooks, and we'll introduce these uh, later on after we've answered some questions from Phil, that we provide all of our partners uh, with customizable marketing, uh, marketing tools. And so, as Phil mentioned on the top left, this is a brochure that's been branded as BoomSync, but all of the copy and all of the content uh, it has been uh, provided by, by eFolder. And so it really takes the labor and the work out of producing your own marketing content that uh, you don't need to you don't need to hire a designer or hire a copywriter to produce all of this stuff. Um, you can just take it and uh, you can you can take it as it is and drop in your logos and that can take five minutes. Or you can uh, be a bit more ambitious as, uh, as as your company has done, Bill, and really give it a new skin and and make it look really sleek. Mm -hmm. um, but so there's there's multiple ways you can go about it, but but you're going to get uh, some really uh, easy to customize uh, marketing material that you can uh, rebrand in about five minutes. Yeah, uh, most of the work is really done by you guys. Even the email campaign, the blog campaign, uh, it's all in that playbook. Uh, as a we just kind of took it and made it our own, but all the collateral, you know, all the the, the text was already there. And the email and block, so it's fairly easy to execute it. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the idea. Is that nobody nobody has the time to really think through an email campaign or create their own webinar or create their own PowerPoint presentation or write their own white paper. And no, a lot of partners today don't have the time or don't don't want to invest the time or the money into doing that. But provided the tools, it makes marketing a solution like this very easy. Uh, so let's uh, let's go into some of these questions, uh, Phil. That I think will be of, of interest for some of the people on the on the audience. Um, so why do you put such a high priority in mar uh, on marketing, and does branding actually make a difference? Uh, as I the main reason we put such a high priority on marketing, and uh, you know we even brought in a, a marketing admin in house here to execute a lot of this stuff and help me out with it, is we want to have that predictable growth. You know, we want to, you know, as you know, the MSP space, as you mentioned, it's it's getting, a lot of people are in the MSP space these days, and I believe there's going to be a big consolidation over the next couple of years, and we want to come out on top of that. 
Uh, does branding really make a difference? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we all love our clients and so forth and so on, but you know how it is. We work with computers and people. What could go wrong? Everything. Uh, so every once in a while you're going to have a sticky situation with a client because either somebody didn't do something or something broke really bad and you know things will go wrong. So by having this branding in place you're also increasing your stickiness with the client. Uh, so if somebody is on BoomSync you know they might think twice of, of leaving you if it was just that one incident that went wrong and other than that you're taking very well good care of them compared to if they're like on Dropbox. They're like okay well so your Dropbox is Dropbox. So I do believe branding makes a big difference. Okay, great, 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 great answer. Let's help. And uh, next question here: How long did it take you to ramp up all of your marketing activities? All right. So when I say all my marketing activities, I'll put it specific to the Anchor product. It from start to finish, it took us about two months. Okay. Okay. Um, and that was and and really. Uh, that was mostly because you you guys made the the decision to um, not only drop in your logo but really give the a lot of the marketing pieces a whole new skin or a whole new look. Yes, correct. Um, yeah. At this point, we were working with Tri Digital, who's an MSP marketing company, who did all that nice collateral for us, and they're doing a phenomenal job at that. And you know that takes some time. Then you got to build the website. All of that that takes some time. And then when you do the email campaign, you know you do that over about a month because you can't just send them an email every week. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, which marketing activities have you found your customers engage with the most? So in this particular, it was definitely bringing the flyer in our technology business reviews. You know, because everybody did get the email and they saw the blog post and so forth and so on. But when we sat there down with them, you know, knee to knee across the table, and you know, we go over, hey, and we got boozing, they're like, Yeah, I saw an email, can tell me exactly what it does and, and you know the client, so you can tell, well, you know, those five salespeople running around, we can now make sure they get all their stuff and all their laptops are backed up and it's like, Oh, well that sounds interesting. Well let me put you on a thirty day trial, oh yeah, that and off you go. So that, that was probably the biggest impact for existing clients. Perfect. Yeah, I mean the the tangible the tangible nature of a brochure and also that's the perfect way to use a brochure is is when you are doing this QBRs or you're doing an in person meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really something that you can leave behind that not only speak to when you're in their office but also leave behind with them. Right. Um, and it's not it's not gonna get stuck in anybody's inbox because it's it's uh, it's something that you've talked through and that you've left behind. So, mm -hmm. um, and it, who do you 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 sort of touched on this? Uh, right. Uh, yeah. So we do a couple of things. Uh, the particular collateral on the website and landing page and the brochure and all those they they were done by Tri Digital. Uh, if you Google them, you find them. Uh, he came back from the MSPU days, if you guys remember, and he preached on his own. And he has a you know a very good marketing program. For tailored for MSPs and they do really, really good artwork. Um, as a, we brought in an in-house marketing admin who helps me with a lot of the mailings and the heavy labor and the envelope stuffing and yada, yada, yada. And I'm also part of the Robin Robbins Producers Club. Uh, so I'm very engaged in her marketing uh, program as well. Perfect. Yeah, and for anybody on the line, we do encourage that you uh, you know, join a peer group. Uh, Robin Robbins is a is a great peer group to join. Very focused, uh, very focused on marketing and and sales and, and growing your business. And um, some of our best equal partners are members of that group. Uh, uh, can you tell us about a time that marketing won you the deal? Yeah, so uh, this is a story I have, and uh, you know, we we did Google AdWords, and uh, they call us up, and really, what we went out there is for a phone system. Uh, we do also business grade phone systems, and uh, so we're there, and we're proposing star to star, and da da da. They're in a crappy eight by eight, and we also look around, and they have about fourteen, fifteen machines, a marketing company. And they're all running off like a crappy NAS and they have no real backup and if this thing dies all their stuff is gone forever. So we came back around and uh, you know we proposed them obviously the voice solution because that's the main reason we were there. 
Uh, but we also propose BoomSync, Anchor. We're like, hey, we can put all your files into Anchor, you know, uh, 15 bucks a user, all your stuff's backed up, access from anywhere, you can send around all these huge media files and everything will be in tip-top shape. So the funny thing is, he actually ended up signing up for Anchor, and he did not sign up for The Voice. <laughs> uh, but we got in, we landed an account, you know, and about six months later, he finally called us and said, you know, I had enough with 8x8. I'm now ready to switch to your voice over IP system. <clears throat> so we got both things in, uh, but Anchor really made the difference there and got us the deal. Wow, that's awesome. And so that's really speaking to the, the whole idea that marketing uh, services and, and, and selling one service uh, can really provide you with a wedge uh, into these <laughs> into these Correct. Large Deal. And it's it's part of it's an additional service offering that you kind of need to have these days. I know. How should partners leverage vendor relationships to market their solution? Uh, that's a good one. Um, well, obviously, I'm very outspoken in the eFolder Anchor community, <laughs> uh, so that's good. You know. Try to get any MDM funds from them. Try to do webinars with them, lunch and learns. I know you guys will definitely sponsor those. Yep, exactly. And uh, yep, exactly, exactly. And so, when launching a new campaign, what process do you follow to get your marketing work done? And so, working with TeleDigital is is a piece of that. Um, you mentioned you have uh, uh, an admin who who does some of these tactical items. Um, but so walk us through sort of when you when you decide to do an email campaign. Sure. What is it? What process are you following? Well, I'll, I'll walk you through the the anchor process. I mean, the first thing we did is also we got the playbook from you guys. You know, so I'm like, oh, that's great. We can work with this. So I then sat down with Tri Digital and said, hey, this is what we got from Anchor. Make it our own. Uh, so they went ahead and and started creating a logo, the BoomSync logo. Uh, so we went back and forth until we sat on the little cloud with the BoomSync. Great, we got that. Uh, then they rebranded all the material. We went through a proof edit, so forth and so on. We put up the landing page, got that plugged away. <clears throat> and then really we used your pre-created emails, which was made them ourselves, and started dripping our clients and new prospects with those three emails. Perfect. Okay, great. And uh, and so, uh, just last question here. What advice do you have for partners who want to start marketing their solution? Sure. Uh, it's funny because part of the peer group name I'm part of is called 80% Done. And that will be my advice to anybody. It, it will never be 100%, and if you wait till it's 100%, you never get it out and you won't start marketing. So as long as you're 80% there, let it go. Let's do it. Let's move on. Perfect. Okay. Um, so uh, really quick here, um, you know, we've talked a lot about the Anchor solution and its ability, your ability to brand the solution. Um, and uh, Phil, today, uh, from what I understand, you're you're achieving 67% gross margins on that is uh, Anchor. Yep. Which is great. Where else do you make that? That's right. I mean, it's it's uh, really CloudSync is, as you said, is a, a it's it's becoming more and more not not only desired but more uh, businesses are finding that they need a, a solution like FileSync. And mm -hmm. if you're able to d deliver it at a competitive rate and uh, deliver a feature-rich product that is branded uh, with uh, branded by you and guaranteed by you and, and managed and supported by you, right. um, you're able to achieve some really nice margin. That's uh, huge. And, and FileSync is really only one piece of the puzzle. We've sold this solution just for backup as well. You know, so you can use this as a, as a backup if that's your angle you want to get in. If you have sales reps running around with laptops and you want to back up their entire laptop, Anchor will do that for you. That's right. That's right. Anchor does have advanced backup features, and so there's there's a lot of uh, different ways to position uh, Anchor. And and really, marketing what it allows you to do is identify those different pain points that your clients may have. So for one client, it may be that they need a backup solution, and for another client, it may be that they need a sync solution. 
And for another client, it may be that they need uh, an alternative to FTP and VPN protocols to access the file server. Um, and all of those, uh, all of those different things are, are satisfied by a solution like Anchor, um, which is so versatile and so feature rich, and um, and really just needs <laughs> needs to be positioned in the right way. Um, uh, so great. So um, so playbooks. So uh, we talked uh, quite a bit about uh, the playbooks that uh, eFolder offers partners, and uh, the big thing here is, as I said, is that these playbooks are guides uh, that provide you with customizable, pre-made marketing materials. Um, so this is everything from videos to emails to white papers, brochures. Uh, we have presentation decks. Uh, just a lot, uh, a very uh, rich uh, resource for you to use. Um, and I'll actually take this opportunity now to uh, go into uh, the Anchor Playbook and show you what that looks like and how um, how you can use the Playbook. Uh, so let me go ahead and close out of here, get into my sync tool. Um, all right. Yeah. All right, I'm going into the uh, Client Awareness Playbook. So we have uh, several different playbooks. We have one that's called the Client Awareness Playbook. We also, for Anchor, we also have a, a playbook that's called the Dropbox Problem Playbook. Uh, both of them serve different purposes. Uh, the Client Awareness Playbook is really about uh, raising awareness around the solution, uh, around your Anchor solution. The Dropbox Problem Playbook is uh, talking about the Dropbox problem and uh, raising awareness around uh, some of the risks that your clients face by having a solution like Dropbox in the workplace. Um, the way these playbook, playbooks work is, is very straightforward. Um, we even uh, we, we write in the playbook how to use it, but uh, the idea is that each page is a, is a marketing asset. Um, so in this case, this is an email that you would be sending out to clients. Um, we give you a description on how to use this email. Um, so we mentioned pulling together your house or prospect list, including a call to action to a white paper. We provide you with that white paper, actually, which is eight ways to boost employee productivity and morale with business-grade policy. Um, so for the email, when you click on this, you'll actually get a, uh, just a Word document with the copy to send to your clients. With the white paper, uh, since it's actually a marketing asset, uh, we provide you with the PDF version of the document. And if you take a look at the PDF version, let's get this open here. So if I go ahead and download uh, the PDF version of this uh, marketing tool, uh, what I end up with is exactly that, the PDF version, and it's, uh, it's eFolder branded. But um, this is really just a, a, to give you an example of what this solution, what this uh, white paper should look like, right? After it's been branded, this is generally what it should look like. Now, when you're looking, when you download the Word version, this is the this is the version of the document that you're actually going to brand yourself. So if I download this here and I get this open, uh, what I'll find is is a brandable version. So it's a Word document, easily editable. We highlight every aspect that you should change. So uh, everything from the date, uh, where you should drop in your logo. Um, uh, the footers, every mention of eFolder, you can easily remove, um, and we give, we highlight where uh, where you should put your your own branding in. Um, so this playbook is chock full of, of different marketing materials that you can use. We have another email here that's promoting an ebook, seven risk Dropbox poses to your corporate data. This is something that uh, Phil has, has branded himself. Yes. Um, also and. Uh, and then we have another email. We have a diagram that you can use. Uh, we have a video that you can actually put uh, anywhere. You can put this on your website. You can send this out to clients in an email, whatever the case may be. But we provide you with that uh, that video footage. And there's no mention of eFolder on this whatsoever. We also have a video that describes file server enablement and the way that it works because this is such a, a, a great feature. Um, we have ways to describe your products, blogs that you can use, phone scripts, uh, so in case somebody is waiting on hold and you can drop a little marketing message in there. 
screenshots of Anchor, uh, and then this is the brochure that uh, Phil was mentioning. Um, this is the, the way that it's executed or that we provided to you, and you can easily brand it like this. Or you can, uh, as, as Phil has done, you can take this, give it to a designer. Elance is a great site for this. You can tell them, hey, we want a new skin. We want to put our branding on this um, and, uh, and really make this our own. And so you can do it that way, but we also provide the brandable version, which would take you three minutes to rebrand if you, if you want to do that. Give you a PowerPoint presentation that talks through Anchor, the Dropbox problem, so all of these different things. Um, and then you can download all of the assets here at the end if you if you just want to download them as a zip file. All right. Um, so on that note, I, I do want to uh, hop into some questions here because um, we, we have had the question queue filling up. Um, so uh, Cyan is, is asking, uh, sounds like you're selling to your existing clients. Uh, Phil, this is address you. Has this process helped you helped you to land new clients? Yeah, it has. As I said, that example of that marketing company that you know what we did there's a cold lead from Google AdWords and we went in there for a voice, but it ended up selling Anchor and that stayed in the account and then six months later we got the voice on top of that. So yes, it has. Perfect. And um, also like with our new, we have a cloud solution which is a full desktop as a service and we use Anchor kind of as the connection broker between the cloud desktop and your local PC and we sold to a new financial company with 19 users and one of the big things for them was really only about 10 needed to have a full desktop as a service and the rest, nine of them were just sales reps running around so as long as they had access to the files via Anchor, via BoomSync that was good enough for them. So we were really able to get their monthly cost down tremendously because they only had to pay for 10 full ones and then we just charged them for nine additional anchors and that really got us the deal there too. Awesome, awesome. Those are, those are two great examples of uh, just uh, you know creative ways to really position the anchor solution when you find. Uh, Michael was asking, what is the market segment to target for the anchor client? Um, and, and really, I think he's asking specifically, is it SMB or is it mid-sized companies, enterprise? Uh, which right. segment have you found to be the most receptive? So we play in the SMB. Uh, you know, the smallest account we sold this to has six of them. <laughs> Small law firm, they use six of them. Uh, you know, the largest account we have is 110 users. And out of the 110 users, about 50 of them use it. Uh, so that's where we sold it. I don't see why you can't scale it. I mean, you can go as big or as small as you need to. We do have a minimum of five. We don't go below five. But yeah, well, that's. I mean, that's a that's a great tip as well. Is that some you, one of the decisions you have to make is which clients you uh, you choose not to serve and. Uh, and so setting those minimums saying, you know, it's really not profitable for us to, um, or attractive enough for us to serve a, a client who only has two people on Anchor, right. um, maybe a strategic, strategic decision that you make. Correct. That's just not our client, you know. Um, and then uh, Mike, uh, Michael, just a follow-up question is asking, uh, what is the, I think he's asking about pricing for partners. At, so the way Anchor is, is priced is, uh, it's really a, a licensing model, so you pay on a per user basis. Um, typically, uh, our pricing starts at uh, $10 per user per month, but goes down from there. So it's volume-based pricing. The more licenses that you purchase, the more, uh, uh, the greater the discount you'll actually receive. Um, so you start at 25 users, that's our minimum, um, and that's $10 per user per month. Um, and then uh, it goes down from there as you start purchasing more licenses. So good question, Michael. Typically what we're seeing is, is partners will then go out and uh, resell the service with a 2x or 3x markup uh, to their clients, and that's how you're able to achieve those uh, gross margins of anywhere between 50 and 70%. Um, right. So, I mean, what we do is, you know, we I think we get around $4, $4.50 a license, so a lot less than 10 and we sell that 15 a license. You know, if you do 20 or more, we drop it down to 12. 
Uh, so anywhere from you know 5 to 20, it's 15 a user. Uh, after 20, we go down to 12 a user. Uh, so it's very profitable. You know, as it's just an additional offering of your solution stack. That's right. That's right. Um, and how many how many users uh, do you have on Anchor today, uh, uh, Phil? Oh, I'm thinking probably around 120, 150. 120, 150. Perfect. Something around that. And we use it in house as well. You know, when we started this eight, uh, eight, nine months ago, we were on SharePoint and that really wasn't all that great. We tried OneDrive, that was horrible. <laughs> so uh, once we found Anchor, we got it working, we got it figured out, we branded it, we said, well, let's dog food it and use it ourselves. So BoomTech itself runs on Anchor. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, another question here: Who who supports the end user? Is uh, is the reseller or does eFolder have a support desk? Uh, typically, um, eFolder is not actually uh, interacting with your clients. Um, we sell on a wholesale basis to you, and uh, and then you're delivering this as a managed service to your clients. Um, so you're providing the ads, moves, and changes. Um, you're providing the the support or the help desk. And uh, and so uh, Phil, that's that's been the case uh, with you, with you so far, and how you've delivered. This Absolutely, service, right? and you know I like to always make one of my guys the the, the subject matter expert. Uh, so in this case, you know one of the techs here when we started this process, we were like, okay, you're gonna become the BoomSync expert. And he then learned the product, you know, created the processes around it, wrote it all out we call it everybody has to make a, a shiny how-to document and then he trains the rest of the technical staff on that product so everybody becomes familiar with it um, in our case it actually alleviated support issues because before that clients were on Dropbox some were on OneDrive some tried SharePoint we had people on jungle disk uh, so it was a mess and nobody really knew how to support them and what to do so by kind of moving everybody, consolidating this whole thing, it made our support incidents drop dramatically because the thing just works. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean, anytime you can adopt the service, that's that's there's there's not only the uh, the revenue uh, the revenue to the the revenue opportunity to consider, but also any time that you're reducing your support tickets and your labor, uh, that's going to translate into profit. If you're increasing your revenue. Decreasing your costs, you're going to be more profitable, and so that's what it sounds like has generally happened in, in your experience with Anchor. Yes. Uh, and, and Bill was asking, do you use it for Apple uh, Apple users as well? We do. Like that one company who does uh, does marketing, Dry Digital. They have out of the 15 machines, about five of them are Macs. Uh, so they use it on the five Macs, and the other ones on the PCs. Perfect. Yeah, Anchor does have a a, a a Mac client and also the Windows client, and um, and as I mentioned before, all those different mobile applications or mobile uh, operating systems that are supported. Well, uh, on that note, um, you know, I just want to uh, mirror one of the first comments that we received. Uh, you know, Wells is saying, "Phil, thanks so much for sharing, taking the time to share your business insights," and I I just want to. Um, Thank you as well, Phil, for, for taking the time and really sharing your experience and your expertise in, in marketing. Um, I think everybody gained something today. Well, great. Well, uh, uh, I want to thank the audience for attending, and uh, we'll make sure after the presentation to send around the slides and the recording of the webinar for your reference. Um, but on behalf of eFolder, uh, thank you, Phil, and uh, thank, thank you, you, everyone else. Absolutely. All right, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. -bye.